Hi gang, here are some more tips for making Van de Graaff generators. These were prompted by your comments to my first How to Make a Van de Graaff Generator video. Be sure to watch that video first if you're new to making Van de Graaff generators, since this video uses that one as a starting point. Here's something that's a big improvement from my first video, as you can tell by the longer spark. In that video I showed you how you could run just this wire into the can or dome. Usually you see that whole section, including the brush inside the dome. Tests in my Van de Graaff Faraday cage experiment video showed a 20% improvement with this whole section inside. The length of the spark further shows that. So here's a simple way to make it. First I'll need to modify my can so that I can put the top part with the brush inside the can. Probably hard to see but I got some sharp edges here so make out you smooth out any sharp edges. You don't want any at all. To make electrical contact with the inside of the can, I've cut a long piece of wire and stripped off most of it here. Uh, that way when I put it inside the can like this, it clumps up and makes contact with a lot of the insides. For those of you who don't know how to strip wire, I'll give you a brief overview. To strip the wire, I have a wire strippers. And this one actually has an 18 gauge setting right here, which I'll use. Now, if you don't have that, then you could use a knife instead and just carve it off, but I'm going to use this because there's less chance of me actually cutting individual strands if I use it. Next, to attach the wire to this. Now I've already put one rubber band around here. So what I'll do is I'll stick the wire up through there. Okay, now I further want to secure this again, so I'm going to take this wire and just kind of put it up like that, take another rubber band. There you go. So the whole idea there is that no matter what I do to this piece of wire here, it won't upset this wire here. That way I won't have to constantly be readjusting it. So again, you want that wire, top brush, to be very close to that rubber band but not touching and you want to spread out the strands of the wire as well so that there's a lot of nice individual sharp points there. Okay, so I've taped the can to a uh, plastic container here. I'll take the wire and stick it inside. Push inside the other one and I'll turn it on. Oh! Ouch! Works great. Perhaps the thing I get asked most about is the grounding of the brush at the motor side of the Van de Graaff. This needs to be connected to a good charge source or sink, usually earth ground. Here are some tips for doing that. For the brush facing the belt near the motor, I've done the same sort of arrangement as I did over here with the rubber bands. Here's one way of getting a ground. I've got the brush that's closest to the motor connected to this wire here, which is Connected to that extension cord and plugged into that wall socket over there. And what I've done right here is gone to the hardware store and bought a standalone plug and I connected that one wire to the ground prong. The other two prongs are not connected to anything. My power supply has two wires coming from it to go to the motor and one of those is connected to ground. So what I could do is take a wire with two alligator clips and connect the brush that's closest to the motor to the wire that's connected to ground at the power supply. And it doesn't always work, but in a pinch you can always use your own body as the ground source. Of course the most fun ground is to have no ground at all. I've done here is taken another can, opened it up. I've taken the wire from the brush near the motor and stripped it. And just like I did with the wire on this side, I put it inside the can. And just to prove there's no ground wire, there are the two only two connections coming from the power supply going to the motor. Another difference I want to illustrate is uh, when the brush is close to the belt versus when it's touching the belt on the motor side here. 
Touching? Not touching. Touching? Not touching. So if having the brush touch the belt is better, then why not do it? Well, one reason I can see is all this belt residue over here, all this powder. Uh, even on the brush right there, even over on the Coke can, it gets everywhere. So there's a lot of wear and tear on the belt this way. I often get asked what materials can be used for the rollers or pulleys. So here are some suggestions. These are plastic tubes which I get from hobby shops and they come in packages and forms like this. And I like them because watch what happens down here at the uh, leaves of my electroscope. I'll triple electrically charge this plastic tube. You can see the leaves separate quite easily. So they're great for triple electric charging which is what's going on between the roller and belts in a Van de Graaff generator. I'll start by cutting a central shaft, same length as my older one. Then I need a shorter piece, about the width of a belt, that the belt will go over. So I put the central one on the motor shaft, but when I put the bigger one on top of it, it's a little bit of looseness there. It's uneven. So I'm going to make up that unevenness by um, putting a little bit of clear, thin tape around it. Try to build up the diameter. And that's a snugger fit. So now I'll use some cyanoacrylate glue to glue it on. And there it is in place. Now to try it out. Next I thought I'd try glass for the roller on this end of the Van de Graaff generator. And for that I have a fuse. The first step is to remove the two metal caps and the insides. This can be done with a soldering gun or soldering iron. Just a little bit of solder in this end right here. And there's the resulting glass tube. I used an old soldering iron to melt the plastic on the inside of my Van de Graaff tube to make it larger to fit the new glass roller. The next step was to assemble it. In my first video I didn't show how I put in the rubber band belt and some of you asked to see it. So here's how I did it. I start by putting the belt around the glass roller and inserting the belt into the Van de Graaff support tube. Then with the roller in place, I insert the shaft through the Van de Graaff's tube and roller. Next, I put a rubber band around the shaft to hold it in place. And lastly, I go to the other end and use long, thin needle nose pliers to pull the belt through and sit it on the other roller. Before adjusting the brush to face the belt, I needed to run the motor briefly so the belt could go to where it wanted to. And there's the finished glass roller in place. Notice that the belt is off to one side, and that's because the glass roller doesn't have a rounded profile or a crown like my nylon roller did. That causes the belt to slide to wherever it wants to on the roller, and in this case probably because the shafts are not aligned perfectly, it slides over to this side. But it works great. And here's a glass one in action. What are some other suggestions for roller material? Well, here's a drinking straw. And if I charge this one triple electrically, you can see from the leaves here, that seems to be a pretty good one. Another suggestion is electrical heat shrink tubing, which you can buy in electronic stores. I haven't tried this, so I don't know if it'll work. But it's an idea. And as I pointed out in my How Van de Graaff Generator Works video, the triple electric effect is what's taking place between the rollers and belt to charge them. So when selecting the roller and belt materials, make use of the triple electric series table. And as you can see, the plastics are on the negative side and glass is on the positive side. 
and rubbers in the middle. That's why I put the plastic roller near the motor and the glass roller at the other end near the can or dome. And that's why my belt is made of rubber. One question I get asked a lot is can I run this off of batteries? And that really depends on your motor. This small Van de Graaff generator right here takes two D-cell batteries uh, connected in parallel, so for a total of 1.5 volts. So a 1.5 volt motor. This is also a 1.5 volt motor, but it barely runs on four D-cell batteries. And keep in mind I'm talking about with the belt in place. Without the belt it runs on one D-cell battery. So the belt plays a part too. What I've done here is connected four D-cell batteries in parallel. So all of their pauses are connected together and their negatives are all connected together. That way it's still 1.5 volts, but I get a lot more current. And I just cut the positive to this side and the negative to this side. And it just barely turns the motor. But I get a spark. Well, thanks for watching. Check out my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more videos like this. That includes my first How to Make a Van de Graaff Generator video, which I mentioned. There's one that goes into great detail on how a Van de Graaff Generator works. And if you want an electroscope of your own for testing your own materials, then see my How to Make an Electroscope video. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos. Or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon.